YouTubers and thank you for tuning into the Dice of Life Tour review. Strangely enough, I've actually started to um, basically film this video a little bit more earlier than what I've actually expected. But anyways, let me just go ahead and grab the webcam and see what we've got today. And actually, we've actually got a bunch of our products today, apart from that toy time here. <laughs> but, um, let me just go ahead and show it to you guys, though. I guess I'm going to be quite curious as you are. And, um, let's see what we have. Ooh! Actually, I might turn to this side. Of where I am now, actually, hey? Ooh! <coughs> okay, um, quite nice. And I might also... Um, how do you say it? Show you a couple of vehicles actually. I put that truck there, which is actually this one here. But there's also another one. <gasps> oh, did you see something moving over there? It was from here, wasn't it? Though, eh? You just saw something quite orange, right? But anyways, let's move on to those water beauty first, and also that St. Patrick's Day card as well. So, let's get started. Well, first off, I'm going to take a look at first is this Fifth Level Origami British Wildlife Collection uh, toy in it. Top up, top on the 13 pounds. And this is the one I feel like, um, yeah, it's a Canada Goose. It's a swimming Canada Goose migrational flock top pack. That's what it's called. Um, yeah, there you go, there's the back of the packaging, it's just like that. There you go, got a tree of Canadian geese swimming now. Forgot to rub off the line, so I <laughs> at the bottom. And you also have one flying away. Of course, when it's pretty much taking off from the water, I suppose I. And uh, it looks pretty nice. <coughs> it, does, it does look quite amazing, I suppose I. And let me just take a look what we have. And this is actually one which I've just felt like, wow, it's probably one of the other most asked for. British Wildlife Collection themed toys. There you go. That's what we've got though, hey? Some Canadian geese that swim. Isn't that quite nice? I mean, we have already made Canadian geese that have already swam in the water like that, I suppose, eh? But having that, that just shouts out to me, wow, this is something we've never had. Um, I might be totally wrong. Like, is there another batch of this product though, eh? Maybe I should start making, you know, batches of these products. There you go. <coughs> Looks pretty nice. Canada geese, as it says on the back there. Looks pretty cool, actually. And as always, as per usual, they all look pretty much the same. Um, but what I'm actually looking out for is errors, especially on the face. And the face sometimes can be a bit inconsistent, especially those eyes. Uh, but yes, I have to say, it looks really nice in the way they've been detailed of course and the chin strap uh, is also very nice that white over there and as always we all know that chin begin you know it actually begins with the letter C really and so does Canada <laughs> as always as usual of course and there you go you get like the white front here as well that's very typical for a Canada geese actually I'm, I've actually got a bit of a funny theory though and uh, you know Canadian geese, when they were first brought into England, well, a lot of homesick British people just came back from bloody America, and then they just brought in with not just Canadian geese, but also grey squirrels, and they just think, wow, they would just go nice for their own, you know, estate parks, I believe. I believe that was sometime during, after their, you know, their colonisation towards America, or maybe it was something else, say. Eh? Um, but yes, a lot of, I'd probably say during the Victorian era when there's, I don't know, maybe I might be totally wrong here, eh? When there was, you know, some British people who might have pretty much, um, yeah, I've got a funny feeling a lot of Canadian geese who might have bought in Canadian geese and grey squirrels from North America, which is interesting. And, <clears throat> it's funny that our British diversity uh, our British biodiversity isn't really that, you know, that much of, as you said, it's not as pretty much vast as other countries are, but, yeah, we still have plenty of amounts of wildlife spectacles, especially whenever I think of Canadian geese, like many geese species, they actually do migrate, and I suppose they, like, during, like, you know, 
the second half of the year, or maybe during like January and February. Um, I guess these guys, and um, whenever I think of Canadian geese, they take one of the greatest spectacles on earth. Their migrations are just so glorious, even their honking sounds. Whenever, whenever you just see Canadian geese, like a like a flock of Canadian geese flying away, that's pretty much how I can recognise the sound. Often, I suppose. And hey, it doesn't look too bad. And luckily enough, I've only got at least around. I don't know. Just very nice. Of course, I've got like loads and loads of Canadian geese. I've got seven here. Looking pretty much all the same here. And yes, especially those cute little, little eyes here as well. Looking eyes as well. Um, yeah, and they've also got like this sort of very weird black pattern right at the back there. Which I've got no idea what that is. Although what really is strange is, is I can see two which look like they haven't got their... Oh wait, hang on, there's actually a couple of more a couple more of those birds that don't look like they've got like black detailing uh, which in a sense is a bit sad it's actually about um, how would you say it I think there's only about three of these birds which actually haven't been detailed with black which is normally over there normally it's tend to be you know tends to be located right at the back of the bird but sadly for these three well I might as well just detail them <coughs> in a sense that, you know, I feel like something's missing out there. You know, it's funny, I've got a funny feeling that, you know, whenever I start being told you, I'm always going to start being quite light. But this is nice, starting to be as early as possible, just to get, you know, the best amount of time, and um, just me trying to find, you know, a fucking black pencil. Because, I just didn't add the details of what the other three Canadian geese have completely had. And I'm just, you know, filming like this and, I don't know, I'm just trying to get like a black pencil here. And I'm struggling. Of course, I'm not showing it by camera here because you'll be, you know, super bored of me. Alright, I think I've got a black pencil with me. I think. Okay, we've got it right over there. It's only a small one. And I think the very simple trick is we're going to be detailing them like so, but we've also another thing we might do. I might want to do watercolour. Hooray! There's water inside here, so let's try and be very careful here in the way I detail toys. And it's actually one thing I've totally forgot eh, whenever I come and do watercolours and stuff. Um, maybe for me it's best not to do watercolouring on the floor because, well, the floor would easily get wet and stained and next thing the floor would pretty much damage. Well, that was quite rash of me, wasn't it, though, I, I'm doing that. Well, <laughs> but I'm doing this because what I'm trying to do is pretty much implement the amount of detailing, which I think is, you know... As always, as per usual, whenever, whenever I come and think of toys, toys really need, in my opinion, to have really good detail. But the problem with toys getting the amount of detailing and the amount of, um, I would just say, other patterns and stuff, like, you know, the Canadian geese has got that beautiful triangle at the back there. You know, that beautiful black triangle at the back. But that's the real thing about it. That's actually pretty much sad. And with that being said, um, detailing costs money in Toy Room, which in a sense is pretty much sad, but true the same on Friday, but there you go. That's what I've just detailed. Just a trio of Canadian geese who have lost their black triangles, and now they've got some. Oh yeah. But, yes, of course, yes, I do know that apart from the way they look, the eyes are also a bit different as well, like whenever I think of the head, profile and design, like the shades of black, or the tone of black, or even the tone of the brown as well, that I use as well. And the brown that I use is mainly like, you know, some sort of darkish brown colour. Uh, but nevertheless, it looks pretty cool as well. Let me just put these guys in here, of course. And I'm also double checking as well, if they've all got names here as well. And I'm just, you know, 
pretty much looking at every single model of a Canadian goose. And, you know, it's pretty much hard work whenever you've got, like, 12 of them. It's funny, I would have never thought I'd be getting, like, you know, this many Canadian geese. It's funny that, isn't it, hey? Normally it's during the non-breeding months, but this time it is in the breeding months. Which, in a sense, is March. Although, that being said, however, March is still pretty much the remainder for many non-breeding birds. Um, but yes, we are coming up towards spring. In fact, spring has landed, of, of course, in the UK. The days are getting longer, the clocks are going forward. That's why daylight savings is coming. And also, it's also getting a bit warmer and the sun's also getting a bit high as well. But anyways, there you go. The geese are going to migrate now. Off they go. Oh, just hit straight to the penguin. How crazy is that? Anyways, let's move on to something else that we've got. Speaking of geese, we've got a flip of origami. Ah, it's a swimming Asian swan geese feeding on on pond sage leaves. Twelve pack. Yeah, it costs about thirteen pounds, so that's a one pig dealer. Then the other product I did. And there you go. That's the back of the packaging there. I would have never thought these geese would be coming back though. Uh, but let me just go ahead and unpack this. Uh, it does look quite cheesy with the um, sedge leaves, but let's see what they look like here first. Ah, they almost look like they look like seaweed, to be honest, though, eh? But uh, but those are pond pond sedge leaves. It, but that's that's something what geese normally are like, though, eh? And that is food for the geese. I'm not even kidding. That is food for the geese because, as we all as we all know. Well, geese are technically herbivores in their natural diet, but when it comes to the humans, what I've also researched, like, there was a one moment in Cannon Hill Park, I actually fed a geese, I don't know if it was a Canadian one, maybe a grey leg, I can't really remember though, when I went into that local park in Birmingham, of course, and in Cannon Hill Park, I actually fed one of the geese bacon, or maybe it was Man of Fun Park, which is like the local park I go to in Northfield, which is like a little little suburb of Birmingham, as always as be usual. But what is actually nice, if I go back to the subject of the pond sedge, they come in in a very nice, um, what would you say, colour combinations of green, but also like different shades of green, like you know, the light green, bright green, or lime green, but let's take a look at the swan geese. Very similar to what we've seen before, but in the way I'm seeing it though, it looks totally awesome. I love the wings, also the head profile looks good. It's got that beautiful light looking face, and also the tail at the back there. It looks brilliant actually. Uh, very similar sort of design to the Canadian geese in the way it's been brownized. In fact, it looks quite brown here. Of course, there's peach at the front, or is it tan or beige? Because there'll be other people saying, Oh, but I don't know what colour is it? Is it candle, or is it beige, or is it peach? Well, it's more like... It actually looks more like tan, to be honest, eh? Because maybe if I'm referring to peach, then it's like a pinkish orangey sort of colour. Okay, but, um... There you go, they've all got the names, Swan Goose. Um, they're actually not that well known compared to, like, you know... Grailer geese or Canadian geese, but I believe it's like the domestic forms that they have there. Um, it's only when they're in domestic forms, I believe they're a lot more well known, I think. Oh, this one's a bit more of a Botox stirrer. If I can show it to you, eh? Hey? This feels like we're getting so many geese, I'm actually going to be like, you know, something in the Untitled Goose game. Also, must be that. That Easter video that Stuart Ashens has actually been making there. You know that Easter 2013 video that he had? He had like some sort of weird bump and go cheap toy. Uh, it was like a knockoff toy. And it had like words like the goose. And it was like a bump and go goose toy. But there you go. And um, that is the Swan Goose product there. Got six of these. Which in a sense is quite a high number, but. It doesn't really matter, but let's move on to another product here, of course. Off you go. Being detailed as, as strangely enough, I'm not really that much of a detailed type of person because, well, I'm always snooping as usual, I see. And it just made it straight towards where the penguin clipper was. Actually, my. Oh my god. I'm actually gonna be. Um, before I can actually continue. Um, 
and I need this because, well, here's my dermal 500 lotion. My hands are just, they are just so bone dry. And I mean, oh my god, my hands are just so diabolically bone dry. So I'm just going to add some cream before I'm going to be continuing throughout the rest of this video. So don't expect to be quite perfect, though, as you might expect. But nevertheless, I'm just so glad, hey, you know what, making pop-up toys isn't really that bad after all, and with the implementation of water-themed toys, that's not bad either really, as well. I have to say, the amount of pop-up toys I've been making has been quite the constant, I have to say, rampantness. Um, but it's a very nice sign. It just shows you how much hard work I've been doing here, hey? Oh boy, let's move on, eh, shall we? Okay, so... Let's move on to this one here. It's a flip up of a darling penguin couple! It's swimming underwater camera, penguin tourists, and clam slash scallop discovery 12 pack, and it costs about £13.50. Back of the packaging looks like that. Ooh, we've got some clams here, we've got some underwater cameras here. So that looks pretty similar to the other products. But ooh, my crocky Charlie's, we've got some clams. So, anyways, let's go ahead and take a look what's inside. And see what they're like. That's come. Oh wow, got some. Ah, oh, okay. That looks quite a basic looking set, eh? There's not much components here, but we do have a pink penguin who actually, strangely, doesn't look that too feminine looking, although there's a bit of white over there as well being exposed. Actually, I might get, make this penguin look more feminine. Doesn't turn out pretty dirty. Anyway, looks like that. Pink penguin I did. I've done in the watercolour, but probably dirty now. Well, I'm just going to... Yeah, that's the whole stereotypical thing with pink. Stereotypical penguin. I'm doing feminine colour, but we're going to make the eyebrows... A lot, actually, the eyelashes might be a bit different, eh? Um, but there you go. That's what I've just did, eh? Just make the penguin look, look better than what I've actually expected. Oh, it looks so much cooler like that. Even though there's a bit of white there, uh, it doesn't matter, eh? Um, there you go, here's the other side of it as well. Seems to be like, it's completely covered with watercolour. Yeah, it looks like something with watercolour in it as well, but let's look at the orange one next. Um, oh no, there's some detailing lost on this orange pink one here, of course. Oh god, why am I losing detailing? I'm sure that is not a good sign. I feel like... Maybe there's some sort of weird epic style thing. I just feel like, well, I don't know. I'm just trying to implement the colour onto the toy, and I didn't realise it. Oh god, what the hell is moving the toy And then the next thing, they just look like they haven't had the colours so far. They haven't had to get their colours so far. That was a pretty poor show of me. And in fact, that was very, very embarrassing just to see how much detail that actually haven't added there. And that's not a very good look, though, guys, I'm afraid. So, yes, there's always just the usual when I come and use that toys. Oh, my God, I'm just going to have to get the toys out of here. Because I'm just going to have to get the toys out of here. And I'm just going to have to get the toys out of here. And I'm just going to have to get the toys out of here. But I'm just not going to show it to you there, guys, and come and see this because. Well, the video would have taken so much more longer for me there just to show it to you guys, eh? But, <laughs> it's not always being about the best, it's about being me. And about being themselves as well, really. Of course. And, um, yeah. There you go, I've just simply added to... There you go, this orange penguin here. Who sadly lost a lot of detail in there earlier on. That was really stupid of me trying to think that this penguin has lost so much detailing, I, I would have never thought this would happen, but there you go. It's now back in action. <coughs> okay, let's move on to the blue one. I think the blue one's looking really, really perfect because I can't see any detailing lost here, except for these two. <laughs> but, nevertheless, um, yeah, you can't go wrong with penguins, really, eh? Very nice. And let's see what we've also got. Uh, we've also got some cameras here. Very similar, and there's also some instructions at the back here as well on how to use the camera. So, 
it's literally that one there. So the first thing you have to do is to lock those tips into place like so by just doing it like that. And then the next thing that you're going to be doing is just push it onto the front forwards like this. And then it will just project it like so. In fact, if I grab the other camera here, there you go. That just makes a very weird clicking sound that just looks like that. Isn't that not, not too hard? Oh yeah, I love it eh? And let me just show you from the back where we set those, how would you say it? Those folds like so. There you go, that's what it looks like when it's being popped. And there you go, there's another one here as well that I've also um, thought of as, I don't know. But what I'm actually trying to say is that when you push it here, there you go. That's what it looks like. That's what it literally looks like when the camera has been clipped, which looks like that. But there's also another cool feature about this set is that you've also got some clams. Eww! I'm a clam! <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna pretty much give the clams some pearls because, you know, that's what clams often tend to have. Or scallops, are actually in the back of the packaging they call them scallops. But, yeah, they're pretty much clams. And um, yeah, they look pretty nice. Can actually fit the pearls right at the back, of course. You can pretty much make, you know, make the pearls that they're looking like they're literally inside. It looks like they've got pockets in there. Oh wow, we are. It's like they've got some sort of weird chomping jaw action, and they've also got pearls inside here. Look at that. Feed me pearls. <laughs> There you go, that's what they'll be saying. I think that's what they would normally be saying if they have got their pearls lost. There you go. It actually reminds me of that one other Club Penguin game called Aqua... It was, you know Aqua Grabber, that was like that one game where you actually have to control the penguin with the submarine and then you just grab the pearls from those clams. And you've also got like a very big clam with a very big grand pearl. And there you go, it's quite a very strange looking set. But it does look pretty much nice, and also the clams, or the scarps as you call them, they can be quite, you know, bit 3D-ish. I should actually say that it actually looks pretty nice. But, um, yeah, I actually don't mind the way these clams have been rendered. They look pretty nice. Very, very nice indeed. I, I dare say that whenever I think of clams and scallops, they do prepare with their mouths. Which looks like that, they sort of prepare it like so, they go backwards like that and I believe um, I don't know what I'm saying here but the predators, that the predators for these guys would definitely be crabs of course you can eat scallops and so does crabs, crabs also eat scallops as well that's kind of a set there eh? unfortunately um, only two products have lost so far in terms of these honey that was a bit of a foul wasn't it eh? Oh, I just went straight towards the um, the penguin flipper once again. But let's move on to this card here. Ooh! Since we have actually realised that the, the first three toys I've looked at, and so is this one here. In fact, as I've actually realised today, the toys I've been reviewing, they are Generation 127 themed toys. Um, you may have noticed the number as well. So, the Generation of Flip Flap toys has now changed. We've gone from 127, actually 126 to 127. So we're literally on the lead up towards Easter and I think Generation 127 would definitely be the Spring Generation or like the Easter Generation because that's what we'll not be doing at the moment, don't I? Happy St. Patrick's Day, that's what it says in this card. Basically a Penguin Club World themed... Ooh! It's a St. Patrick's Day product. And what's also quite curious is, is the logo. And if you look at the logo here of the St. Patrick's Day um, event, it actually does remind me of the London 2012 logo, but less sexy than what you would, what you would actually might be thinking of. Yes, that there's meant to say 2022, but... <laughs> yeah, that's what I've got there, eh? Okay, here's the licensing info, very important to see that. Very important. But what's also most likely important is, is that the card is in the shape of a shamrock. Hopefully I've got the um the name of that 
leave quickly, do I? <laughs> it looks like I've got a pe couple of penguins there. We've got three penguins celebrating St. Paddy's Day. We've got one jumping into the air with a St. Paddy's hat. There's another one here with, with some sort of weird leprechaun hat on the middle of there. And we've also got another leprechaun penguin with a... Is that like a pot of gold? That's pretty nice. And we've also got these beautiful shamrocks on the top here as well. And if you open up the card, that's what it looks like. Happy St. Patrick's Day. It looks pretty awesome. You've also got a very strange looking line where you can write your name. Which looks like that. It looks totally awesome, I think. Yeah. It looks pretty nice. I don't think there's not much space that you can pretty much, you know, implement that many X's onto it though, eh? But, nevertheless, it's quite a nice looking card. Go green, get lucky, I would say. Up you go! Oh! Have you ever seen a flying shamrock before? Well, that just pretty much hits... That just nearly clobbered a giant penguin, which is of course that there, the giant Christmas penguin. But, let's move on to something quite extraordinary. Do you remember this dump track? Which is of course this yellow one here. Uh, Frederick Conway Gibson, I call him there, eh? Well, we've also got another dump track here which looks pretty much similar, but a lot much more slimmer in terms of the way that he's been designed. Well, of course, yes, let's meet up with this one here. This one here, This I'm going to call him Wrigley um, Stokes. Actually, yes, he's called Wrigley Stokes, the um, dump truck, but he's literally in a different model. I guess he's some sort of uh, Western Star type truck. If you live in America or somewhere in North America, I believe, maybe Canada, possibly, I would actually say Australia as well, and New Zealand, and also like other countries. I'd definitely say South Africa also has those trucks here as well. But um, yeah, it's actually quite a nice looking vehicle, that one, I think. <coughs> RBMCC, which stands for the Royal Building Material Constructions Company. Would have never thought that this vehicle would be pretty much finished on a Sunday. Well, yes, it did. The project did begin on Saturday, and it only took like a day to finish though, so it wasn't so hard to pull this off. But what we've also noticed was that in the way that this dump truck has been detailed, there's some more detailing into the back. There's the lights, RBMCC, and there's, well, it looks like a license plate here. It says RB22WSJ. Um, and there you go, it looks quite nice, there's the other logo here as well, RBMCC, there's what it looks like to be, I don't know what are these, because I'm not quite sure on my truck in that many, but yeah, it looks quite nice, there you go, there's a very weird, strange looking smile, uh, I think the smile looks quite weird, alright, the smile does remind me of those very new classic 2010s cartoons, like Adventure Time, Whenever I see that, that just shouts out to me. Ah, oh, that's a bean mouth. But right, let's turn on to the other side here. RBMCC, Royal Building Materials Construction Company. It's a very interesting sort of truck, though. Eh? And there you go. There's some um, info on the bottom here as well. It is made in the UK and China, which is actually not that surprising. But there you go. That looks quite nice. I, love it. I actually like it. I like it a lot. Once again, we've also got the exhaust pipe detailing as well, just like the other dump truck. And um, it looks pretty nice. I actually don't mind having another truck with an exhaust pipe pair, and also like this beautiful cab shape. And if I compare to these two trucks, this orange one here is pretty much a slightly different animal. It's in fact a lot much more narrower, Whereas this one here is a lot much more wider, so there you go, there's a size comparison here as well. What I've also noticed about the orange one is that the orange one is shorter, but is actually, if I take a look at the back here, beep, 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 a little bit longer than the big one here, of course, which is the yellow one I'm talking about. The, you know whatever it is, I think it's the Gibson construction. PRC Property Limited Truck, Dump Truck I call it, eh? <laughs> or Tipper Truck as you can call it, eh? It's pretty nice. I mean, it's literally like the bin of the back of the truck. Lovely cool looking, um, tipping feature, eh? I love it. Oh, it can talk as well. That's weird, isn't it, eh? 
and there's also some back window detailing here as well. It's a bit much more slimmer and a little bit more like it's not like that there as well. It's like a pair of those windows here, but this one has only got like one window on the top, which is actually quite small, but it's actually quite you know rectangular in the way it's been shaped. But yes, it looks quite nice actually. I, I mean, the way it's been detailed, it's not as perfect as you might expect in here, but. It is such a fantastic looking rendition of a dump truck. I love it. I like it a lot. Not gonna lie though, it's quite an, an amazing looking model. And um, I have to say that whenever I think of it, it looks fantastic. But the other thing I've also noticed about this dump truck is that I can't see any scuff marks, I can't see any holes or rippings or anything that I compare to um, Frederick. Frederick's like pretty much, um, how would you say it? A bit much more played with, so that's why I added some stickers, like so, because you know the box was starting to look like it was ripping apart that way. But with Wrigley, if I look at Wrigley, Wrigley looks kind of fresh. Now, obviously, as we all know, Wrigley's quite a new vehicle in Ring Zero, but how much time he gets played with also depends on how much he's going to get hammered, though, and also how much play there is. I call it like the car's love. Because it does look like something out of Disney Pixar's cars whenever I see that facial design. Um, but yeah, that looks like that's about it though, guys. Let's drive away. Okay, they're just literally going to drive away though. Both of these trucks, of course. And I need to pop to the dunny because I feel like I'm going to be taking a great big amount of poo. But anyways, if you really enjoyed in this very interesting video, please give this video a like. Subscribe for more future videos in the future, and as always, thanks so much for watching and bye for now. And also, happy St. Paddy's Day as well. Although, as nothing said, we're looking out, we go the way. Well, that's been four days away, I guess. Okay, I'll see you again. Thanks so much for watching again. Bye.